Okay, so in this section, what we want to do is uh, turn what looks like a kind of a normal quadratic with an x term in here. This is kind of causing some problems. Um, it has this x term, and we would like it to factor so that it is x plus something squared, or, or another way to look at that is x plus something times x plus the exact same thing, right? That's that would be something times itself, which would be defined as that thing squared, right? So we'd like this to factor as like x plus 5 times x plus 5, so that we can write it as x plus 5 squared. Uh, and then we could use it to solve equations, like if x plus 5 squared equaled uh, 36, we could take the square root of both sides, you get x plus 5 equals plus or minus 6, and x, when we subtract 5 from positive 6, will be 1, and when we subtract 5 from negative 6, we'll get negative 11, and we'll have solved it. Okay, so how do we figure out what that number is? How do we figure out what it is? Well, um, to remind you, what we're looking for there you go, is two things to go here and here, but those two things, conveniently, are exactly the same, the exact same number. Okay. So remember um, that if if this is going to factor into these two factors, then they need to be able to multiply together to get this guy here. Okay. So whatever goes here and the identical thing here, it needs to work out so that we well we don't we we get to make c whatever we want it to be what. What needs to happen is we get an x squared. Well, that'll happen when we do x times x. And x times x will give us that x squared. We're all go also going to multiply x times this number and this number times x. Okay? And so whatever this is, and it's the exact same thing here, we're going to get squiggly uh, x plus squiggly x equals 6x, right? That, those two need to add together to get 6x. That's how many x's we have. Well, if these two are identical, and we add them together and get 6, then this must be half of 6. So this, let me just back this all the way up. Those two numbers, which are identical to each other, must be 3. It must be half of 6. That's the only way that we can meet all these conditions. That they would be identical, so that we can write it as the quantity squared, uh, and that when we multiply it out, we get 6x. Now that we know that, what will c have to be? Well, we'll get the x squared, we'll get the 3x, we'll get plus another 3x, and we'll get 9. Right? So whatever that number is, it would just have to be half of whatever this number is. Okay. So our job here was to figure out what c was. Uh, 9 is what c needs to be. We get x squared plus 6x plus 9, so c is 9. Figuring out that number is key, because what we can do here is now we have a factor at x plus 3 times x plus 3. We can write that as x plus 3 squared, and if that were set equal to something, we could take the square root of both sides, cancel out the square, you can see how we're on our way to solving for x. Okay, so let's look at another one. Now this one I picked because it doesn't come out as nicely. Right? What we need are two identical factors, x plus something and x plus something. We established back here, whatever that number is, it's going to have to be half of whatever you're multiplying by x. Half of this number right here, the coefficient of x. What's half of 7? 3 and a half, or uh, 7 halves. I'm going to write 7 halves, because okay, it's a little more precise. Well, it's, it's a lot more precise. Um, and then we're going to multiply 7 halves by 7 halves, right? Because we're going to go x squared plus 7 halves x plus 7 halves x when we multiply this out. Uh, plus, okay, what is this going to be? What is c going to be? It's going to be 7 halves times 7 halves. 7 halves times 7 halves. You just multiply straight across. You get 49 over 4. So c is 49 over 4. Okay, here... Um, I've left a little room because I know what I'm going to do to solve this equation is basically do what we did in the last two problems, figure out what c has to be. What does c have to be? Um, let's see, well it's going to be x 
plus something times x plus, the exact same thing. When we multiply this out, we're going to get an x term and an x term. They're going to add together to make 6, and again, they have to be identical numbers. So two numbers, exactly the same, uh, add together to make 6. I'm describing half of 6. Two numbers that are identical, and they add up to 6. Right? We need it to be able to multiply together to get x squared plus 6x. x squared uh, plus 3x plus 3x plus. OK, so here's the, the next part. When we multiply 3 times 3, we get 9. So if this was x squared plus 6x plus 9, it would factor perfectly. It would factor as x plus 3 times x plus 3. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now the only thing is, it didn't have a plus 9 just a second ago. We added 9 to this side. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we add 9 to this side as well. I'm just going to move this up. Why did we pick 9? Because 9 is the number that causes it this to be a, uh, a quadratic that factors into two identical factors. Why do we want that? Because we can write it as x plus 3 squared. On this side, we just get over 16 plus 9 is. That's 25. We'll take the square root of both sides. OK, the square and the square root cancel each other out. We get plus or minus 5 on this side. Subtract 3. Uh, positive 5 minus 3 is 2. And negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. So there you go, two solutions. Now this one, it doesn't, the numbers don't work out as nicely. Okay. Um, if we were to try and factor this, we'd find we couldn't factor it in, and uh, even less, we couldn't factor it into two identical factors. So we're going to have to get rid of this 3, move it to the other side, v squared minus 11v equals negative 3, and now I'm going to find the perfect uh, c value to throw right here so that this factors as a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so I'm going to have to have v minus, well, we've established several times over that this must be half of 11. Half of 11. Whatever goes into these two factors must be half of the thing you multiply by v or x or m or whatever that uh, variable is. So uh, what will this turn out to be? It will be a negative 11 halves times negative 11 halves. It's going to be 121 over 4. So we're going to have to add that to both sides. All right. So this side now factors as v minus 11 halves squared. Why squared? Because we're multiplying these two factors times each other. They're identical. Right? So that's the same as saying squared. Um, let's see. Well, 3 is uh, 12 fourths plus 121 fourths. Um, is going to be 108 fourths. Let's just make sure of that. Uh, 109. No, yeah, 109 fourths. That doesn't look good. negative 109 fourths. So that's what is on this side. Um, take the square root of both sides. Um, I don't know why I have a negative 109 fourths. That's silly. Negative 12 fourths plus 121 fourths uh, is definitely positive. So positive 109 fourths. Um, so the square and the square root cancel each other out. We got v minus 11 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 109 fourths. We're going to add 11 halves to both sides. OK, so we get 11 halves plus the square root of 109 fourths, or minus the square root of 109 fourths. All right, so uh, we could have two solutions, 11 halves plus the square root of 109 fourths. What does that come out to be? By leaving it as fractions and stuff, we can come up with the most precise answer possible at the end here. Plus the square root of 109 fourths. Okay, so 10.72. And I'll bring that back up and just change that to a minus. 
0.27, let's say 9.8. Okay, this is where we do 11 halves minus the square root of 109 fourths. Okay, so this is an example of where it doesn't work out as well, but the cool thing is we couldn't have solved it before just using factoring. This is unfactorable, and so we would have just been uh, unable to continue. But now using completing the square, we can uh, get this guy out of the way, find the perfect match for these two guys, uh, so that this will now be what's called the perfect square trinomial. It factors into two identical factors, and we can then write it as that factor squared. We can take the square root of both sides, and that's really cool. We can do that to anything, any quadratic we can solve that way. And that's the basis of, of what comes next, the quadratic formula. Okay, this one. Um, we're not really able to do this with a number other than 1 right here. So let's divide everything by that number there so that it cancels out to give us a 1. So we'll divide everything by 3 on both sides. So we'll divide this by 3, divide this by 3, divide this by 3. And on the side, 0 divided by 3 is 0. Okay, now we can, um, we can continue. Uh, and we, you know, we, we can't factor this thing, so we're just going to add 3 to both sides. Now we have x squared minus 4x equals 3. Okay, what would go right here to make it a perfect square trinomial? Uh, well, that would be, let's see, the two identical factors we need are going to have to be you know, these numbers right here are going to have to be half of 4, so that'd be 2 and 2, and when we multiply negative 2 times negative 2, we get 4. And we just added 4 to the left side, so we need to add 4 to the right side as well. So now we can write it as x minus 2 squared equals 7. Okay, we'll take the square root of both sides. So x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 7. We'll add 2 to both sides, and we'll get x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. We want to get the decimals. The decimal form of the answer is 2 plus the square root of 7 and 2 minus the square root of 7. Four point six five. And we'll bring that back up, change it to minus. And we get negative point six five. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Like I said before, we take something that was unsolvable before. We had no way to uh, to get x by itself. Uh, we turn it into a perfect square trinomial, and uh, we get decimals, but we do get solutions. There's solutions where we couldn't have gotten solutions before. All right. Um, so this one was kind of nice because everything was divisible by 3, and so now we look at an example where that's not true. Uh, we're going to have to divide everything by 5. We want this to be a 1, so we'll divide everything by 5 on both sides. We get w squared minus 4w minus 17 over 5, whatever that is. Okay. So we'll add 17 over 5 to both sides. And now we have w squared minus 4w uh, equals 17 over 5. Right. Um, what will this number have to be? Well, we know this is going to have to factor as w minus 2 times w minus 2. Why? Because 2, or negative 2, is half of negative 4. When we multiply this out, we're going to get w squared minus 2w minus 2w. Right? They have to be identical because we want to write it as w minus 2 squared. So that's the only way to get uh, two identical factors that when you multiply it out, add up to a negative 4w in the middle. Uh, when we multiply it all the way out, we're going to have a plus 4. So we're going to plus 4 here on both sides. Let's see, 17 fifths plus 20 fifths. That's how many fifths 4 is equal to. So we get 37 fifths. So let's see, you got w minus 2 squared equals 30. 37 fifths. Take the square root of both sides and uh, continue right here. W minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 37 fifths. Add 2 to both sides. 
and w equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 37 fifths. And I'll leave it to you. If you want to find the decimals for that, uh, that'll be fine. But this is an exact answer. I like exact answers. Okay, last problem. Um, very similar to the problem you have in your book. Very similar to a lot of problems that involve quadratics that we want to solve. We have a thing, and we have a border around the thing, and then we want to find the width of the border. That happens a lot. But um, this one kind of tried to make it, you know, like it, it could be a real life problem. Um, this is something my wife wants to do. She wants to make it, a, like, the deck a little fancier. But if we make it a rectangle, it's, a, it's an easier problem to solve. So what we have here is a, a deck that's 12 by 8, um, and then a border of white rocks. Okay, so, um, yeah, so it says that. Uh, so she wants to build this deck, and she wants to put a border of white, wa right, white rocks around it. It's kind of hard to say fast. Um, so the thing is, if we know how much rock we can uh, get, enough to cover uh, 81 square feet, uh, how wide would we make the border so that it is uniform all the way around? Um, and that way we can you know, mark it off and build a little barrier so the rocks don't get out before we ever bring the rocks in and pour them around the deck. Uh, if we ever do build this deck, I will figure out how wide the border will have to be. Of course, it'll probably involve a little uh, calculus, maybe, because, uh, well, it won't be a rectangular deck. But if it's rectangular, it becomes a very simple problem to answer. So how do we uh, get to this? Well, we need to involve an equation with x in it that we can solve. It turns out a quadratic is an equation that we can write and solve. Okay. Um, we have information about the area. We know how much area the rock can cover. We also, if we take 12 times 8, can figure out how much area the deck already takes up. And then we can know the total area that everything will be, right? So if we take 12 times 8 and we add on the 81, we're going to get, um, I won't make you sit here while I try and do my mental math very slowly. It was 96 plus the 81. So the whole thing, the deck and the, uh, the rock, will be 177 square feet. Right, in the book they just give you the equation, but I thought I'd show you why they came up with that equation. Um, so that's the total uh, square footage that this thing will take up. Okay, And now we could take the new rectangle and, uh, and multiply its uh, length and width together and, and say that it has to come out to be 177 square feet. So. 177 square feet is what we have to get when we take the length times the width of the new rectangle with the uh, unknown border around it. Okay, Okay. what will be the length here? Well, it'll be 12. And on either side, there's border with a, a width that we're going to call x. So 12 plus x plus another x, so that's plus 2x. All right, so that's the length. How about the width? Well, that's going to be 8, and just 1x. There's no border here. This is where the house is. Right? This is the top view of the house. So 8, and then another, another x, 8 plus x. So 177 equals, OK, so we're going to have to multiply this out, because what we want to do is, is what we've been doing, is uh, find a, a way to complete the square. OK, so we will multiply this out. We got 8 times 12. That was 96. Uh, we've got 8 times, let's see. Let's see, 12 times x, we got 12x plus 16x plus 2x squared. Okay, so if you go 2x squared uh, plus uh, 28x plus 96 equals 177. All right, well, let's subtract 96 from both sides. We'd like to get the x terms by themselves on one side. So 81 uh, okay let's see kind of not surprising it's the area of the total minus the area of the current deck would give us 81 right so it turns out that this expression gives us the total area of the rocks uh, as a function of X okay so let's um, well we need this to be one as we've talked about before so we're going to uh, divide everything by 2. 
right, so we get x squared, x squared plus 14x um, equals 81 over 2. It doesn't come out nicely. I'll just leave it, leave it as a fraction. All right. We would like this to be x plus something squared, right? Identical. Well, that, that thing would have to be 7, right? Because that would be x plus 7 times x plus 7. We need these two to be identical. And we need, when we multiply it out, to get 14x. So the only way for that to happen is to have a 7 and a 7. So we get 7x plus 7x is 14x. So what's that going to come out to be here when we multiply it all out? Well, we're getting 7 times 7 is 49. So we're going to have to add 49 to both sides. Okay, so 81 halves plus uh, 96, 98. Yeah, of course, 98 over 2. So 9 and 179 over 2. Okay, uh, now we take the square root of both sides and we have x plus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 179 over 2 and subtract 7 on both sides so we get negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 179 over 2 and since this is a real-life problem we want to actually get a feel for how big this is going to be. Okay. Um, go. Negative 7. Let's do minus first. Minus the square root of 179 over 2. Well, that's weird. Let's talk about why that's weird. Um, negative 16.46. It's saying that the, the walkway of rocks should be negative 16.46 feet wide. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's look at what it is when we make it plus instead of minus. Because there's that other solution. That makes more sense. About two and a half feet. All right, 2.46. That makes a lot more sense. So if we were to do something like this, I'd go out there and I would make the uh, border 2.46 um, around the whole thing. And we pour in our, uh, our cubic yard of, uh, of rock at, th what, uh, three inches deep all the way around, right? That would give us 81 square feet. Um, so there we go. And not um, exactly something that we're going to use, because if we did this, we would make it more curved like that, but uh, kind of a fun thing to think about. Um, and it's definitely applicable. You can, you can transfer this knowledge over to uh, the problem in the book. The book gives you the equation uh, right off the bat. You just got to multiply it out, uh, put like terms together, uh, write it out like this, get the, the x terms together on one side, divide by whatever this number turns out to be, uh, and complete the square. All right, well, um, thanks for watching. Let me know if uh, I can do anything else for you.